Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over four new Volume 1s of manga releases that I was highly anticipating in the past couple of months. They're finally here. Let's get started. First book that we're going to talk about is Tales of the Tendo Family. This manga is written and drawn by Ken Saito. It's an ongoing series and we finally have Volume 1 published by the folks at One Piece Books. This is basically a drama, romance, slash historical shoujo manga that deals with the famous Tendo family. This story is set, if memory serves me right, after the Meiji Restoration. And as we follow these characters, we quickly find out they are very strong-willed with very notorious personalities and the main Tendo that we're gonna follow is Masato. He is said to marry the character of Hojo Ran who is the daughter of a baron. This is all like political play and uh, Masato's aunt is in charge of the family and she's a quirky weird character that I'm not gonna get into. Hopefully it doesn't get too weird by volume two we'll see but essentially Masato is this smart character who is cunning and wants to set his own path and not let his family dictate how he's going to live and if it means destroying everything from within well then so be it the main issue in the very first chapter actually the opening pages is that he finds out she's a fake the real Ron ran away from the uh, idea of of going to the Tendo family as uh, she was on her way there and decided to end it all and jumped into the river. Fortunately, she was saved by this young, wholesome, quirky girl who proposes the strangest plot and without really knowing what's happening or knowing her, she saves her life, makes sure she's safe and proposes to switch places with her because it is one of her philosophies in life and if she can die saving someone else's life that would be a good thing because her only relative recently passed away her adoptive grandfather and she is completely devastated by this fact and wants to rejoin him but fears that she cannot do this if she doesn't go out saving somebody because that father figure of her it's the only uh, family that she's ever known was an honorable person who put others before himself and wanted to save people and be of use and help and he considered that to be like one of the ultimate things you could do for somebody which is not a bad philosophy just without the whole uh, you know dying in the process and all that stuff so that aspect I found pretty quirky that you would have such a naive wholesome girl take the place of this tragic figure and potentially experience horrible things she doesn't know what she's getting herself into but the promise is there because of that grief that she's experiencing so now she goes into the Tendo family and meets with Masato turns out Masato is smarter than that and picks up right away that she's fake and starts interrogating and, and trying to learn what's really happening if it's if the claims that this run this fake run if you will is true or not well He's going to find out while also kind of developing a friendship slash romance that is going to clash, of course, with what the rest of the family has in store for him. So on a first impressions basis, I like the originality of this story. I love the fact that Ron, even though she's quirky, she's still true to herself and the memory of her grandfather. One of the other aspects that I do like about this story is the fact that these characters are not one note. There is a complexity there. There is a scheming aspect to the decisions that Masato is making. Not all of it you're going to agree with, but you're in for the ride and you understand his intentions of wanting to bring this family down. He is by himself, if you will. And now this unexpected potential ally appears. 
the art on Tales of the Tendo family is pretty good. Nothing mind blowing, but what we do get is nicely laid out. I love the character designs. There isn't too much of an emphasis on uh, like super rich backgrounds and all that stuff, but it's mostly about these characters and how they interact with each other. The facial expressions, the dynamic scenes when there is a little bit of action are really well placed and laid out. So I do appreciate that. Next manga that we're going to talk about is Bless by Yukino Sonoyama. This is an ongoing series. It's a slice of life, coming of age shonen story. But what's cool about it is that it's set in the fashion industry and more specifically the makeup side of things. This first volume is put out by the folks at Kodansha. This is a very underrated title. Unfortunately, it's competing against such a wide range of books in the uh, shonen category or the slice of life stuff but what sets it apart is the artwork i was enamored immensely i think yukino sonoyama is a really talented underrated mangaka i love the art and i think that aspect will carry this title forward and make it something a little bit extra a little bit more special in my honest opinion so this manga in a nutshell tells the tale of two particular characters. One happens to be Aya Udagawa, this young, gorgeous high schooler who's destined to be a model. However, Aya's passion is with the makeup industry, wants to be a makeup artist. Meanwhile, we have the character of Jun Sumisaki, this young, uh, beautiful girl who is bullied because of her appearance. She has to hide the fact that uh, her face is filled with freckles and she's taller than the rest of the girls so she has to hunch over so that she can blend in with everybody else and conform to whatever standard this school or society in general set for her. I love the fact that this is a story about defiance and setting your own path and I think those are universal themes that can appeal to a wide range of readers out there and be quite successful. These two characters meet because there's this event at their high school where it's sort of this uh, like a school festival but it's fashion based so everybody's expecting Aya to model for the class but that's not what he wants to do he tells the character of June who's in charge of the committee that what he really wants to do is the makeup side of things meanwhile June secretly has always wanted to be a model so shenanigans ensue and the two end up switching roles if you will now June is the model and Aya is finally starting his dream of being a successful makeup makeup artist. As a first impressions, I really enjoyed it. I think that, yes, some of these elements, this isn't too revolutionary. It's not going to be like this epic thing that you're going to read. But the fact that you get some really nice representation with uh, the makeup industry and characters wanting to try to do different things and live out their lives the way they want to without conforming to what society has already uh, planned for them is really nice to see and I can always get behind that. I do like the character of Aya. There is a little bit of arrogance to his character because he wants to be this makeup artist but he has so many doubts of you know setting off on this journey what uh people expect of him because of his looks and of course wanting to make a name for himself in the industry right away but you know you're just starting out you gotta you gotta cool your horses and uh go at it bit by bit that would be my recommendation meanwhile the character of june i really enjoyed her first arc and the fact that through her friendship with Aya, she's able to embrace her beauty and, of course, those freckles is really nice. I love the fact that the message is clear that you shouldn't hide your features, you shouldn't hide who you are, you should embrace that stuff and move forward. Fortunately, all of these random things that I'm talking about and geeking out with you on this video is bolstered by the fact that the art comes in clutch. This is one of those stories that really relies on the visual narrative and the art does not disappoint whatsoever. So yeah, super happy with Bless. Unfortunately, I think it will be sort of that underrated uh, hit 
for the year, and maybe not a lot of people are going to pay attention to it. We'll see what happens. Up next, we got the first volume of The Tiger Won't Eat the Dragon Yet. This is by Hachi Inaba, published by Yen Press. It's an etchy fantasy romance, anthropomorphic story. It's a seinen book, and it is still ongoing. So again, first impressions, I don't know how the story's going to end, but I can tell you my thoughts on volume one here. And I thought the cover was kind of weird looking, but I am a sucker for anthropomorphic animal stories. I really wanted to check that out. And we finally have volume one. This is a very stylized way of telling a romantic opposites attract story and now typically with anthropomorphic animal stories you can examine human nature and our traits through the exaggerated versions presented through the animals in this story we follow a lone dragon in this world that i don't think has any humans this must be set in the past or it's in the present i don't know what we do know is that there are, of course, legends that if you eat dragon meat or drink the blood of a dragon, you will gain immortality, you will be healed of all injuries, stuff like that. So seeing a dragon is a rare thing, and a lot of animals are interested in potentially taking one down. In comes the second character, a tiger, a female tiger, who is interested in eating this dragon. However, when she realizes that the dragon is young, he is inexperienced, she decides as the predator to not eat him and sort of protect him to potentially, down the line, consume the dragon. However, we all know this is not going to work out and the two characters are going to instead grow a closer to together and form a friendship and potential romance between the two. It's going to be rough, obviously, because the dragon has a very distinct personality that is very much different from the tiger. And the tiger, she can be a little bit naive, but she's following instinct and is in conflict between, you know, consuming the prey or nurturing the prey. The biggest aspect that made me love this story or these opening chapters is the art. Hachi Naba, I was not aware of this creator until I started reading this book, and it is a really gorgeous series. The character models, uh, you know, of course, the tiger has some big personalities to her. But the attention to detail to their design and when they're in animal form is fantastic. There is a breathtaking sense of fluidity with the action, even if it's not a fight, just the movements alone and the expressions on these animals are really well done. Even if it's a character like a dragon that does not exist in real life, you still feel its aura, its presence, and you understand and comprehend what you're looking at that that is a real thing within the context of the story. It inhabits that space really well, and it just makes the, the forest or the area feel more alive. Same with the tiger and her expressions. There is this uh, orchestra that is happening, this movement, this it's almost like a ballad, a fluid ballad between these two characters as they behave the way they do during this book. Now, as she is guarding the dragon, uh, the tiger starts to learn more about him. The dragon is young, adventurous, kind of rough around the edges, but there is a sweetness to him deep inside there are some insecurities that get bit by bit explored through the chapters. As you read along, you start learning about his past and his worries and doubt and how the tiger is going to fill in for that nurturing role and, and, and is going to take care of him. There are adversaries that pop up in the story. Some are short term, others are long term potential villains. So I'm very excited to check out volume two to see where that plot point is headed. So I do recommend it. I thought this was great. 
The final book that we're going to talk about is Magi Lumiere Magical Girls Inc. This is written by Seka Iwata with art by Yu Aoki. This is an ongoing shonen magical girl series published by Viz Media. And this was a ton of fun. This was the most action packed, funnest out of the four books that I uh, talked about on this video. This is the story of a world similar to ours, but there is the existence of magical girls and in this world it is run as a corporation you have industries that have these girls that have the magical ability and they use them to defeat monster creatures called kai they can be sort of this natural disaster type event and in this manga we follow two particular characters one of them is hitomi the magical girl who works at this startup independent independent company and how bold and different they are from everybody else, how rash she is to uh, take on this case and defeat the Kai monsters, and how this small company, Magi Lumiere, is tightly run by uh, good-natured people that want to make a difference in the world. Unfortunately, since it's a, a one-girl operation along with the tech crew, things can get stressful and hectic, so they are looking to hire a secondary auxiliary magical girl. Now in comes our main protagonist, Kana Sakuragi, this young female college student who is struggling to find a job and she happens to be there at the right time when there's a Kai attack in one of the places she's applying to. So she gets to see Hitomi in action and actually is able to help her out with some things. And that leads into the shenanigans of her getting a job at at Magi Lumiere as the second magical girl assistant to Hitomi. So that in a nutshell is this story. The art is fun, vibrant, very shonen-y. I love that of course it subvert expectations and plays with the tropes of the magical girl that has been around for decades at this point and tries to do something completely different, fun, and new. And I think this could potentially be a hit once that anime drops. I cannot recommend it enough. The main element here is the fun aspect. The characters are extremely likable. The setting is really unique and the art is great. I love how cartoonish, well-rounded, and detailed these magical girls are from the transformation sequences to the artifacts to the magical abilities to fight off the monsters. The actual creature designs look really good too. There are hints of evildoers out there with the humans, so I am looking for forward to reading more about this. You can check it out on the Manga Plus website for free, legally, or you can check out the physical volume, which I have here. Either way, you're going to have a fun time with Magi Lumiere, Magical Girls, Inc. I think this will uh, definitely be worth your time if you want some Magical Girl slash action in your life. So there it is, four brand new volume ones. And I know you're probably thinking, man, this guy did not say anything negative. What can I say? I'm a positive person. I like to look at the positives and it just so happens that these four books I really enjoyed and I'm very much looking forward to uh, continuing my adventures with volume twos of these four series. That's going to be it for now. Thank you all once again. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.